Ah, so 1.6 kind of ties everything together. We actually start calculating what we're going to call marginal utility at 1.6, and then the last skill-based component is called utility maximization, which is another kind of chart that you're going to have to learn how to use. So, we talked about marginal. Anytime you ever see the word marginal, you're going to add one and look for the change. And so you're going to repeat actions. We kind of get back into that cost benefit. Remember, that was the two lines. We're talking about eating pizza and eating nachos, and that you know, the more time that you spend in line, the more money you're going to spend. But each additional nacho had a little bit less benefit. And so we're trying to find what is that intersection? You know, what is the point to where cost and benefit equal each other? Or if you repeat the action one more time, the cost is going to be greater. So, example is there's a movie coming out that you're really excited about. Um, you're trying to decide how many times you want to go see it in theaters. And so, the first time, it says the benefit's $30. You're not actually paying $30. You're actually only paying $10 to go see the movie. But that's kind of the perceived benefit, or you would be willing to pay up to $30 to go see that movie. So, if the benefit is 30 the actual cost is only 10 are you going to go see the movie? Yes. Yeah, because you're going to get a lot more benefit than cost. All right, the movie's great. You loved it. You're trying to decide. Do you go back a second time? Well, the second viewing, you get $15 worth of benefit, $10 worth of cost. Are you going to go see it? Yes. You're still going to go back and see it because the benefit outweighs the cost. And if you're looking at that graph, or you can kind of picture that cost-benefit graph, you're still on the left side of that equilibrium that the points have not met yet. And then you're trying to decide, don't want to go see it a third time. Well, third times you're probably only willing to pay about $5. The actual cost is 10. Are you going to go see it? No. At that point, the cost is greater than the benefit. You're not going to go see it a third time. And so you can see the total benefit is still greater than the total cost, but on the margin, you would only see it twice. That's what we're looking at, is looking for change as things are repeated or as you add things. So that's just saying, they put these teacher tips in there. I like to actually give them to you because I think they've got some good information a lot of times. And so it just kind of gives you an idea of, hey, this is a theme you're going to see over and over and over again. This is marginal analysis, looking for these changes moving forward. So a big, big concept that comes up quite a bit throughout the course is diminishing marginal rates, or in this case, diminishing marginal utility. So if we break down that term. So diminishing means to get smaller. Marginal, you're going to add one and one for the change. Utility is just the happiness, benefit, satisfaction, joy, whatever that you get out of something. I like to teach utility as happiness because it kind of makes more sense. Um, but we're actually going to put a quantitative measure on utility here in a little bit. We're actually going to be able to measure happiness that you get from things. But diminishing marginal utility. This is how the easiest way I've always explained it. That. Have I given you all the donut example yet? We talked about that. All right, so let's assume that the lunchroom is selling hot and fresh Krispy Kreme donuts for a dollar. So you go in, you pay your first dollar, you get your first donut, and it is the most life-changing, revolutionary donut. changes everything you ever thought about donuts. Like your whole life has changed. So good, you decide to pay a second dollar, get a second donut. It's good. It's really good. Maybe not as good as that first one, but it's still definitely good. So you've got the same exact product. The same exact price. Well, you go back, you pay a third dollar, you get a third donut. It's good, but it's definitely not as good as the first two because by this point you've had three donuts. Well, you continue action, one, two, three, 16, 17 donuts later, you're throwing up in the trash can. Same exact product, same exact price, but as you continue to consume more, that utility or that happiness you get from each additional one is going to get a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. Now, obviously, most people are going to get to that point, that intersection of utility and benefit, or where utility and cost, that, you know, obviously if you're throwing up in the trash can, you've surpassed that point. You should have stopped, you know, a couple of donuts ago. But that's the whole concept, that as you repeat things, as we continue to add, that utility or happiness that you get from it is going to get a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller with each additional one. And so what we use this for, we're trying to determine what is the last known point where benefit is still greater than cost, or in this case, where utility is still greater than cost. That would be the ideal point that we're looking for. So when we start calculating this, you've got slices of pizza. Once again, you're eating things, but and we use pizza a lot here. So you've got slices of pizza on the left. 
You've got the total utility, so utility compounds as you continue to do things. The marginal is the change. Add one and look for the change. So for finding marginal utility, we can see when you eat that first piece of pizza, you're going to get total utility of eight. So the marginal utility is eight. Marginal cost is just the price for right now and will be as we continue for a while. But if you kind of break down that term to marginal, add one, look for the change, cost. So what is the additional cost of each additional slice of pizza? That's just the price you pay. So marginal cost is just the price. Ah, you need a second piece. The total utility goes from 8 to 14. So 6 is your difference. That is your marginal rate because you're adding one, looking for the change in total utility. In this case, 6. You add a third piece, you go from 14 to 19. The change in total utility is 5. Strawberry. Why is it going up 6 and 5? and like What makes it go up that much? Yes? Yeah, so like, why is it going from 8 to 14 and then 14 to 19? Like what because that's the additional utility that you're getting out of each slice of pizza, or the additional happiness you're getting from each new slice of pizza that you're eating. Question? Yes, but I don't know what it is. You don't know what the question is. Right. So, as you continue to eat slices of pizza over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we're looking at the additional utility you get from each new slice of pizza. Or essentially, how much additional happiness is that next slice of pizza going to give you? So, we're adding one in terms of numbers and looking for the change in total utility. Oh. That change, that difference, that's your marginal utility. So marginal is the, the change, the difference in the total. So if it's the same, so like from, from 8 and 6, and that makes 14, 14 and 5 make 19, but, one, like, but then you're going 6, 5, 4, those are down by 1, but you missed 7 there, but it's still the same thing going on there. What caused Well, that? it doesn't have to be a consistent rate. It's just showing you this is the additional utility that you're getting from each new one. This is the, the marginal. Or if you've ever worked with derivatives, this is very similar to the concept of derivatives, looking for the change in the total. But it doesn't have to be a consistent rate. And then obviously when you get down here, you're getting a negative marginal rate. You know, at this is the point, this is where you're throwing up in the trash can because you're actually getting less utility even though you've added one more or something. But this is that diminishing utility that is going to get a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller as you continue to repeat the action. And so total is compounding. Marginal is the difference in the total. Questions? Don't overthink it. All this is, this is just the difference. Are we going to ever have to calculate that or is it just going to be given to us? Um, a lot of times it's given it to you. That you'll have to calculate the marginal. But if they want you to calculate the marginal, they have to give you the total. And you're just finding the change. All right. What we're looking for is the point to where the marginal utility is equal to the marginal cost. This is the ideal point. So five slices of pizza is the ideal point for the consumer, for whoever is doing whatever action. Reason big is because anything past this point, the cost becomes greater than the benefit. That's that same kind of X looking graph we looked at the other day. That's that point right there in the middle where the two lines cross is where the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost or what we're now going to start calling marginal utility. But because anything past that point, it's not worth it anymore. Up until that point, the marginal utility is still greater than the marginal cost. So you're getting a lot more out of it then you have to pay into it. And so you're going to keep doing it. This is the last point we know of where utility or benefit is still equal to or greater than the marginal cost. <coughs> Questions? All right. So you're looking for that point. You know, what's the last point we know of where marginal benefit? It says equal to. Always use equal to or greater than because it's not always going to be an exact point. And so it gives you the number of slices of pizza, it gives you the total utility in the middle, and then your marginal. Remember, it's the change. There's 28 and 14 is 6, 14 and 19 is 5, 23 and 24, or 23 and 26 is 3. 
So we're trying to find the point. Where's our cost? So if these were our numbers, when we were doing that same marginal analysis, trying to find the last point we know of where marginal utility is still greater than or equal to marginal cost, well, there's no equal. And so at five slices here, the marginal utility is still greater than the marginal cost. At six slices, that is no longer true. The marginal cost is from greater, so you would not buy that six slice. And so you're trying to find, you know, what is that last point we can determine where marginal utility is still greater than marginal cost, but it may not always be equal. You'll have to make the assumption that, hey, somewhere in between five and six is the point where it was equal. But this is the last point we know of, the last point that's given, where that utility is still greater than the cost. Questions? All right, so now we bring in our measure for utility. And it's what we call utils. So utils are basically units of happiness that you get from doing things. And this is where we get pretty deep into economics. So utils are units of happiness that you get from doing things. Hypothetical situation is you're considering two different vacations. You can go to Tahiti or you can go to Chicago. The marginal utility in utils going on this trip, you get 3,000 utils for going to Tahiti, you get 1,000 for going to Chicago. So just based on that, we would say, well, you're going to go to Tahiti because it's going to give you three times as much happiness as going to Chicago. But as with lots of things in this class, we've got to get into a per unit measure so that we can evenly compare. So we have to bring in what are the prices of these trips. So to go to Tahiti, it costs you $3,000. To go to Chicago, it's only going to cost you $500. So now, we have to get utility per dollar spent. How many utils are you going to get? How many units of happiness are you going to get for every single dollar spent? Well, by going to Tahiti, you get one util for every dollar you spend. By going to Chicago, you get two utils for every dollar you spend. So in theory, you are going to get more happiness per dollar spent by going to Chicago than you would to Tahiti. So wouldn't technically you still get more utils going to Tahiti since you're spending your money since you're still like having more happiness? Because if you spend one util per dollar, you have 3,000 3, utils. But if you spend two utils per dollar at Chicago, you only have 1,000. Yeah, but it's kind of a measure of efficiency. That you're trying to maximize utils per dollar spent is the goal. Oh no, I feel like I wouldn't be too happy in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to cost a lot more than five hundred dollars. It's my plane ticket. Yeah, you can drive to Chicago. It's only like ten hours. God no. Oh yeah. Gas money too. Oh yeah. You get on sixty five and you go straight up sixty five. Then you got hotels down there. <laughs> all right. Anyways, remember, this is all theoretical. This is all concept. This class can't ever think it. And this is where we talked about like. Real economists don't sit down and do this. And you've got to realize you can't always apply these concepts to real life. Because yeah, in real life, you're just going to pick whichever trip you'd rather go on. If you'd rather go to Tahiti, you're going to go to Tahiti. But in economics, you're going to consider how many utils you're going to get from every single dollar, and you're going to choose the trip where you're going to maximize happiness per dollar spent, because that's where you're most efficient. In concept. So. All right, so a fun deviation. Utils was created by a guy named Jeremy Bentham. He was kind of a utilitarian philosopher, and this is kind of back in the late 1700s. And so he kind of came up with this whole ideal of utils and was going to kind of revolutionize society and make it this you know utilitarian thing. And it never really caught on, these big ideas that he thought he was going to have. But we did steal the idea of utils from him was something that kind of lived on. What else he's known for, though, is that he really thought he was going to be like this world-renowned, like legendary figure. And so he wanted his body preserved. And so it is actually still on display at University College in London. That's oh, that's really real what? Yes, that is actually him. So, but now he has like a wax prosthetic head because... I guess in the 1800s, college kids found it funny to like steal his head and go hide it around campus, and it kind of became an issue because he had a, a decomposing head, you know, oh, on campus. So they came up with like a prosthetic, like wax one. But the rest of it is. Yeah, like you can Google him, Jeremy Bentham, 
um, and read his Wikipedia. I can't imagine what that box smells like, Coach. Oh, I'm sure it's pretty bad. But yeah, so if you ever want to go see the guy that came up with Udles, you know, these units of happiness, it's this dead preserved guy. And he so, just thought everybody was going to know Yeah, I know, like he was convinced, like, he was going to be the, like, world's greatest thinker, philosopher, and, like, change everything and just never caught on, so... Um, yeah, because I've never heard of him before in my life. Yeah, most people haven't until you get in here, and so we start talking about this. But I'm, I'm sure you have like, I'm sure you have like a picture of him hanging on your wall. I do not. These are actually the only pictures. I had to Google these. But um, so yeah, so that's the creepy backstory behind units of happiness. So anyway, there you go. So there's Jeremy Benton for you. Ah, this is what you need to know how to do that. This is called utility maximization. This is what you'll actually have to do on the test. It does come up in FRQs, in the free response portions of the test. This is something that every couple of years, you have to calculate margin utility. What the big idea is, is that you've got two activities, and you have a set amount of money that you can spend. In this case, it's $40. You're trying to decide between going to the movies for $10 or riding go-karts for $5. Your goal is to maximize utility for that $40. Where are you going to get the most happiness per dollar spent for those $40? And so what we do is we have to go down and determine the marginal utility per dollar spent. It's how we get our equal comparison. We've got to get it into essentially like terms so that we can compare. So first time you go to the movies, it's going to give you 30 utils. But every time you go to the movies, it's going to cost you $10. So what would be the utility per dollar spent? There you go, three. Uh, next time, what? So I divided 30 by 10. Oh, I literally, yeah, so that's all you're doing is you're taking this and dividing it by the price, and that's going to give you the utility per dollar spent, or how much happiness are you going to get for every dollar you spent. So first time you go to the movies, you're getting three utils for every dollar you spent. Uh, you consider the go-karts. So the first time you drive the go-karts, you're going to get 10 utils. The price is $5. So what's your utility per dollar? Two. There you go, two. Uh, if you were to continue going down, calculating all those, utility per dollar spent for each of these activities. Once you get it here, it's in my head. I've always called it, you've got to start walking down the ladder. But you've got to figure out you know, which activities are going to offer you the highest utility per dollar spent until your money's gone. So three is obviously the highest, so we're going to go watch that movie. Next, we're going to ride the go-karts. We're going to go back and watch a second movie. So now we've spent $10, 20 $25 of our 40 All right, we still have $15 left to spend. So we're going to spend another ten dollars there, another five dollars there. So why? The, why would we just go to the movies four times? Because it's not going to maximize utility. You're going to get the most happiness, benefit, satisfaction, utility, whatever you want to call it, out of three movies and two go karts. Another way to look at this. What? I thought we were supposed to decide between the two, like, like. I thought we were supposed to only pick one. Yeah. Like either pick movies or I thought that's what we we're trying to decide. Yeah, it's a combination. Ooh. So you're trying, you're you're bouncing back and forth. You're choosing these activities until all your money is gone. I guess the reason I'm asking that question is because the movies is greater for every single one. As far as total, it is, but you've got to consider that utility per dollar spent. That's that measure of efficiency. It's happiness per dollar spent. If you were to calculate the total utility, which means you're going to add 30 plus 20 plus 10 plus 10 plus 5, which gives you what, 50, 60, 70, 75. No other combination that also spends $40 is going to give you a total utility higher than 75. So it's kind of a way to check yourself in a way you don't always have to do that. But that is the highest utility that you're going to get from that $40. Or in theory, that's where you're going to get the most happiness for that $40. No other combination would give you more utility or happiness for that $40 spend. A shortcut to this though is that your final combination is always going to be the same. So whatever your final combination is, 
these two numbers are always going to be the same. So in this case, there's only two choices. There's only two options. It's either going to be two movies and one go-kart or three movies and two go-karts because those are the only two combinations where these two numbers are the same. I'll explain the concept in a second. But even if you don't, what's that? What do you mean the same? Yeah. So like one and one are the same? Two and two are the same. What? Oh, okay. I just said, he just said the last one. Oh, okay. last one. No. I get it. I get it. Now. Yeah. It's just you're, whatever the final combination is, it's always going to work out yeah. where these two numbers are the same. I got, I got two. Yeah. So it says how much is the total utility from three and two? That's 75. We did that. And it says total utility from two movies and four go cards. Well, you got 50 between those. Then you add these. 10 plus 5 is 15. 17, 18 plus 50, that's 68. So that combination would also spend your $40, but it only gives you 68 total utils compared to 75. So this combination is going to make you happier than this combination. Starting to click a little bit? Yes, sir. Okay. So there is a formula for this. You don't really have to use the formula. They want you to know the formula because sometimes they'll give you a multiple choice question on it. But you don't really always have to plug it in. You can if this makes, to my math people, sometimes this actually makes more sense. And I'm going to show you a graph in a second of graphically how this works out. But it's the margin utility of X divided by the price of X is equal to the margin utility of Y divided by the price of Y. If that means nothing to you, all that means, these two numbers are going to be the same in your final combination. The margin utility divided by the price of X is going to equal the margin utility divided by the price of Y. These two numbers are going to be the same. Which I wonder if... Can I draw on this? Ah, so if we had a graph, if this right here is called our budget line. If we have, you know, if this is movies and this is go-karts on our two axis and this is our budget line. That, you know, we could pick different combinations based on how much money we can spend. Obviously, if this is our budget constraint, it's kind of like a PPC, but it's a budget. We can't spend past that point. We don't have enough money. If we spend less than that, we still have money that we need to spend. So we need to spend somewhere on this budget line. You have what's called indifference curves. And so what we're looking for and where that formula works out Exactly. It's a tangency. So this is your indifference curve. This is the one we're actually going to spin. You're indifferent between the two products. You're trying to figure out what combination of these two goods is going to give you the most utility per dollar spent. And so this curved line ultimately represents your utility. And so you're going to get different utilities from different combinations of these goods. The point here, which is going to be mu of x divided by the price of x equals uh, that's U, Y, by, by the price, Y. That's that tangency right there of why those two numbers are going to equal each other in the end because that is going to be the point where you are going to get the most utility per dollar spent based on the different utilities and your budget constraint of buying these two goods. If that means nothing to you, your final combination is going to have the same numbers. That's what you need to know. But sometimes seeing this kind of helps you understand why those two numbers are going to equal each other. Yeah, and that's it for 1.6 as far as lecture goes.